Here we have Norm. He's on film telling me to come closer with his... Come closer, honey. <laughs> get down, get down, 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 down. Yeah, today's November 8th, 2007, and I got this uh, yesterday or last night. I'm too uh, close. Which would have been I'm too close, Norm. Yeah. Your head's cut off. That's okay. Um, yeah, I got this yesterday, and uh, this is the first deer I've gotten in probably 10 years, and uh, the Lord really blessed, and so we're very thankful. This may be the last time we ever get a bow hunt, certainly on Cal Aldrink property out by Grand Valley State College, and so um, maybe the Lord bless me. This may be a last hunt. thought it was going to kill me <clears throat> getting him out of the ravine, uh, but we got him out. And uh, so we're very thankful for it. He was with a little sick point, and I shot him. Uh, <laughs> it was wild because he was heading away, and I pulled back the arrow. It flew off the knock. I'm trying to put the arrow back on the arrow rest as he's leaving, and we got a tree now covering his front shoulder area so I had to release back which is a dangerous shot and I hit him in the opposite hip that is facing right here maybe I should turn over and show where that is it's amazing that he died yeah we got it turned over here now he's an eight point he's about average size but back here, I have watched him off last night, he was smelly. And I hit him right there, and the arrow was came in this way. Evidently, it hit a vital artery. He bled to death, that's what got him. Uh, <clears throat> he only went about 50 yards downhill in a real steep ravine. There he lay dead when I found him, so. <clears throat> I'm glad I, there was no blood trail. Would never had a blood trail. I just believe it was God helped me find him, and I'm thankful to the Lord for being able to get him. My prayers always said I have a lethal hit or a complete miss, but not wounds, and it uh, looks like the Lord blessed, so we're very thankful for that. So today is November 9th, 2007, a couple days after I got that buck, and uh, I'm going to get a little footage over here on Cal and Diana Aldrin's property. Um, I said it may be the last time we get to hunt this because Cal has got this property up for sale but there's the uh, Grand Valley Auto Parts way over there so that's 42nd Avenue south of Grand Valley State College this property butts up against the uh, Grand Valley State there's the old gray mare she's always what she used to be 1986 uh, Delta 88 done me a good job got a couple hundred thousand miles on it but this is the bean field that's been cut and these deer uh, still feeding off of beans and I'm gonna go in over here and get a little footage of where I shot this buck just to record it okay and uh, just so we have it. Might be the last buck you ever get. At least on this property. Here's a tree stand that I was in. It's been up there a few years. I've taken a couple of shots, but they've never been good ones. Not at eight bucks. A couple of does at dark moving quick and shouldn't have shot, but sometimes you just got to do it to say you did it. And uh, that's where I was sitting two nights ago. And uh, there's a lane here. Um, because they've been doing some cutting for firewood. And uh, this eight point came first and then a little six point later. And uh, so this eight point comes up and rubs his horns on this tree here. And... Uh, Probably peas down below, I'm not exactly sure. Okay. Then he decides to go on out to the field. You'll see here, I'll explain this 
scrape. But so then he he goes up through here and I pull my bow back when it gets right there about that tree okay so he doesn't see my movement and then the arrow falls off the knock I'm in a kind of an awkward position and he starts to move in quicker as he gets past this tree here okay so I'm trying to get this stupid arrow on the knock and he's moving quicker and I know that he's going to be behind that tree right there in a matter of a second okay and let me get this from a different perspective he's going to get behind this tree and I'm up there and if I don't get a shot off I'm going to get one because he's moving quicker out to the field and uh, I am concerned about the little six point I'm assuming watching me there had been three small deer behind me just two to three minutes earlier and I didn't know if they were watching me and would snort and scare the buck so I knew I had to shoot and I finally got the arrow on the knock and this tree's almost in the way and it's happening so quick and I release and I know I thought I could hear it hit him but um, I wasn't sure you know this is the old metal tree stand it's, it's been a great stand seen a lot of deer here but just not a lot of a lot of bucks come through a lot of does so now at the base of the tree stand that buck let's see he was a rubbing over there oh i know it's a terrible video he's rubbing over there on that tree okay and over there he moving up at about 25 yards roughly and then he's out here and that's that tree right over there that's going to be in my line of fire if I don't shoot so I release an arrow right when he's about in that position and I know that it ain't in the front shoulders or the heart lung area because I didn't have enough visibility once the arrow was knocked so I released a little high, hoping I might hit him in the spine. Well, I hit right underneath the spine. Okay, and that was enough to, to take him out. Well, what's so hilarious is that when I look back over here, a little six point back over, he's rubbing like crazy, okay, on that tree. And I'll go over there and film the bottom of it again. So here we are at the bottom, a little six point, he's scraping down here with his paws, digging up those leaves. And uh, you can see where they've been rubbing a little bit on that tree. Rubbing pretty much the middle of their foreheads instead of their horns. So he's, he's, uh, he doesn't even hear the noise or see what's going on and he starts walking up that way. Well, behind the tree stand I had my excess arrows off the bow and I, my arrows are hanging behind the tree stand so I can't get another arrow otherwise I could have got an excellent shot he just walking up there slowly should have been able to get him but I couldn't get an arrow off my knock without disturbing him so it is all right because I ended up getting a six point but let's follow kind of where that six point or eight point I mean went uh, gonna run out of film here so we got to do this quick so this is about where that eight point was when I hit him and he took off running over the hill here which indicated to me that he was hit and uh, oh 45 minutes an hour later I found him right down on the bottom of the ravine there I ended up dragging him up the side of that hill and then took him out and picked him up in my car over there at the edge of the field uh, it was funny out earlier before that these two bucks came out I see bucks chasing the does out there in that field oh half hour earlier they were just running all over that field i couldn't see how big of the bucks were but boy there was a lot of activity out there it's in the end of the rut so that's very common but back to boy oh boy trying to get that buck that's slick mud and and uh clay and between the leaves on it and moist how about i was going to kill myself trying to get that buck up that by that little draw, I uh, used rope mechanism, kind of like a block and tackle, a makeshift operation to take him up. You can see the toilet paper white where I laid down there to lay a path where I could get him out. And so, yeah, you can 
still see the remains of the centrals down there. Uh, see some red. Uh, I thought coyotes or foxes would eat that by now, but uh, there's my arrow I left there. It's broken off. I thought I'd pick it up at another time. Right in the center of the camera. But boy, that was, that don't look steep, but you go down there, that's a steep right down there. That's too old at age 60 and a bad back. That's, uh, that's some tough work, but God gave grace, didn't hurt myself. And, and but these ravines, boy, they, they drop off, and this is almost always where a deer's gonna go lie if he's dead. And, uh, so this has just, uh, been a great, great, way to end this property if this is the last hunt I get a hunt on it. So one last shot here. This is about where I he was when I released the arrow. And that's about 25 to 27 yards away I would think in the air. Roughly 27 yard shot. And on the move quick and all things went wrong and got him anyway. I know it was God. I think we'll end up giving him to Team Challenge. They're desperate for meat for a great cause. This is the uh, ravine here on the other side where I pulled him up. I don't know, it's hard to tell, I guess, but man, it took me an hour to get that little guy up to those trees. Once there, I get some footing, but that's just like on ice with those slick leaves pulling up that 120, 550 pound deer. You know, right over there is where I got him. And he ran right down there, laid down there and died. I just let him be for an hour and uh, so that's where he lay that's just incredible because he could have gone way down one of those draws there's a lot of them down here and they are steep